this class with a uh, word of prayer. Father, thank you for this afternoon. Help it to be uh, a good class that we have today, the final class of reviewing. Help us to learn many things, uh, and we be reminded of many things from this review. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so um, let's, uh, let's go over the quiz from last week first, and then we will start uh, the class uh, from today. So we'll start with um, question number one. Uh, Call Elaine. Question number one. Go ahead and read the question and um, give the answer, please. Well, I, I heard from Ray, I got a little confused, but I'll the answer. I thought okay. it was in the 19th century, and I thought it was in the 19th century, and I thought it was in the 19th century, and I thought it was in the 19th century, and I thought it was in the 19th century, and I thought it was in the 19th century, and I thought it was it, the Christian day school movement did come in that time period. The answer I was looking for, uh, I thought I was looking for, was new evangelicalism. That's what I was looking for, new evangelicalism. Um, and so, uh, Bill, number two, please. What types of organizations did some fun fundamentalists uh, establish in the 1950s? The Christian school movement. That's right, the Christian school movement. That's right. And... Uh, the uh, first one, uh, Elaine, the answer was New Evangelicalism. That's the answer I was looking for, New Evangelicalism. But I do understand why you put the answer you put down, because it it's, um, wasn't my answer, wasn't my question wasn't specific enough. Uh, Tammy, question number three, please. Name some pioneers uh, within the early Christian day school movement. Um, Frank E. Gablin's uh, Stony Brook School and Bob Jones Academy. That's right. Are um, we looking for individuals? Or? I'm not looking for organizations, so individuals slash uh, uh, names of schools. Number, let me see, um, all right, Elaine, number four, question number four. Okay, when did these two youth movements that began in 1940? Charlie, Evangelism, Fellowship, Word, White? And the other two would be Youth for Christ, yeah, and uh, the Navigators. Mm -hmm. I right, build question number five, please. Name two other fundamentalist endeavors and two name uh, their founders. Uh, Tennessee Temple by Lee Robertson and Sword of the Lord's Soul Winning Conference at Winona mm -hmm. Lake by John Rice. That's right, and then um, Bob Jones University. And then Bob Jones University. Bob Jones Senior. Mm -hmm. By Bob Jones Senior, that's right. Uh, Tammy, number six, please. What was happening in the government schools? Um, the curriculum was shifting from um, Christian oriented to a classical or traditional humanistic approach. Yes, that's right. They were shifting away from uh, going to humanistic, I mean secular. Um, all right, Anna, number seven, question number seven. What happened by the 1930s? In the science textbooks. Um, not, which which years? In the 1930s, what was being replaced in the science textbooks? Um, creationism. And with what was it being replaced? Evolutionism. Evolutionism. That's correct. That's correct. Question number eight, Elaine. Supreme Court of the United States eliminate prayer from the government schools, and two, how did this change the student body within and the government schools? 1962 was the year, and um, uh, scripture was no longer considered important. Uh, was, uh, so a lot of people just weren't paying attention to it at all. 
In fact, in pre-1962, when I went to school, uh, in grade school, uh, before the prayer was uh, eliminated, we didn't read uh, scripture. Okay. We didn't have any copies of the Bible in there. I had my own copy at home, but... Mm -hmm. uh, so from what you remember, yeah. there was no prayer, we pray or Bible reading. Well, there was uh, a prayer. At the beginning uh, of the day? At, at the, yeah, at the beginning of the day. Okay. Uh, in some classes, I noticed the teacher would lead in prayer. It was usually a very short prayer, uh, about half a minute or so okay. at most. Some teachers said you can pray silently. And then nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. We didn't read scripture. All right, no scripture. So, no. I, I wonder if that was a, a cultural thing or not. But um, we got somebody else here, perhaps. We were just talking about this uh, this ruling from 1962 about the uh, the prayer being suspended from uh, government schools, and Bill was giving his uh, account that he doesn't remember much Bible reading in school. Uh, and only the prayer was just limited to maybe a quick, either silent prayer by the class or maybe a 15 to 30 second prayer by the teacher. Yeah. Uh, what do you remember about prayer and prayer, prayer and Bible reading in government schools? First, I want to apologize for being late. I had I thought it started at 3:30. I'm was all. Let's well, understand why you got confused. It's because the previous class was 4:30, and so it is a confusing uh, time. Yeah. We should have them all at the same time, perhaps. But um. No, it's okay. It's just me. Well, I remember uh, going to school and the teacher w read a Bible story. Okay. She read from the Bible. All right. And then she also read uh, uh, from a book. She would read from a book, but not about the Bible, but a nice, a nice story that was a continued story. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I really can't remember prayer. Maybe we said the Lord's Prayer. I can't remember. I'm sorry. We said the Pledge of Allegiance, but right. she did read uh, the Bible in Lagrange, and uh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry I can't remember stuff. Well, you can take question number 10, as long as you came. Thanks for coming. Question number 10. Are you ready for it? Question number 10. Mm -hmm. okay. And I, I will tell you about our high school. Okay. Uh, when I lived in Berea, I went to Berea High School. We had, uh, around Easter time, they had Religious Emphasis Week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think probably our Dean of Women and our our principal were Christians. They were Methodists, probably, mm -hmm. but I think they were Christians. When you think so you had a dean of women at the high school. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, and and uh, so uh, we had uh, we had a great big trophy case, great big trophy case that the trophies would be in out in the hall, opposite the doors where you went into the auditorium. And uh, every Easter, all those trophies came out, and Uncle Charlie Allen, the Custodian had a beautiful hand script, calligraphy, I guess, mm -hmm. like like a aunt, like a, your wife does, whatever her name is. Tammy. Tammy. <laughs> yeah. And um, and he would put scripture verses and everything in this. During the religious emphasis week. During the in the in the in the big. The case. Trophy case. It was very beautiful and a wonderful testimony. And I didn't know about Uncle Charlie Allen, who was doing all that. I asked who was doing it, and then they said it was a custodian. And then I must have told my grandpa, and then my grandpa told me that he was a Christian. Hmm. And he is the man that led your father mm -hmm. to the Lord. Yes. Well, um, and then we had uh, assemblies during that time. Well, I think all the time. I, I can't remember. But during that time, we had assemblies, and, and different people would, different students would get up and read the Bible. And I did that one time up on the platform. But I'm trying to think if we didn't have Bible reading before every every uh, uh, assembly. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure about mm -hmm. that. But I do know during Religious Emphasis Week, there was a real emphasis on the Bible and the Scripture. Okay. All right. So that's what I remember. Sure. All right. Hey, go ahead. Do we answer question number 10 for me, please? Okay. 10. You got down to 10? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm late. In what year did the Supreme Court of the United States eliminate Bible reading from government schools? And what do you think of that decision? I have 1963. The whole temperature of the school atmosphere changed. Soon girls, uh, we lived here then. No, it's, no, we lived in uh, Newton. Soon girls wore jeans and pants to school. And uh, there was a whole uh, new 
look to this to the way the girls look. One girl who wanted to wear jeans to school. I may have this wrong, but I think that they they always wore dresses, and then they were allowed to wear slacks. And one of the things is that that was the period when dresses were real short, way above the knees, real short. Mm-hmm. For me, I thought slacks covered them up better. And we always had to fight with her sister to keep her dress a little bit longer, and she was mortified. We thought it was so short, and she said it was the longest dresses in the class. But anyhow, I, I was going to say, so one, one girl wanted to wear jeans. I think I have this right. And she went to the court, and she won in the court. Mm-hmm. It was either for jeans or to wear slacks. It was in Collingswood? In Collingswood, really? yes. Mm-hmm. She went to court. Whoa, whoa. I don't know. I don't remember. But she won, whatever it was. I don't know. We can mm-hmm. probably find out. Yeah, this would be, this would be the young. 70s. Whenever they were young. Okay. I don't Maybe know. Perhaps the, um, yeah, would be a part I was in school then, and Richard was in school. Maybe the late, late 60s or early 70s, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we could ask Richard. He would remember. Mm-hmm. Okay. Would too, probably. All right. Good. I Pleasure. talked a lot, but. That's okay. Good thing I came late. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll try not to. Um, number, um, uh, Jill, number 11, please. In what year did NAE establish the National Association of Christian Schools? <clears throat> in 1947. That's right. In 1947. In 1947. Uh, what question was that? Uh, number 11. And uh, Tammy, number 12, please. Oh, good. I get this one. Yes, you do. In what year did BJU Press begin producing textbooks for grades K through 12? That was 1972. In 1972, that's correct. And what do you, do you think of their textbooks? Well, I'm glad you asked me rather than everyone else because um, we had some, some people that didn't know anything about them. So, um, Well, <clears throat> they're Christian and they have a um, creationist viewpoint, um, so their science is good. Um, from a historical vantage point, I just did start noticing in high school that um, they were sort of favoring kind of an ecumenical approach mm. and um, <coughs> Catholicism. So yes. um, it, was a, it was a real subtle thing, but you know, I noticed it. So. Yes. Mm. Okay, so uh, Anna, this question is for you. Yes, uh, go ahead, Elaine. Oh, and it's okay, Elaine. Probably you didn't have it. Did you get the first part there? You got you part A, part one, but not just two, right? You got that part, right? Yeah. And the part, second part, uh, if you heard what Tammy said, I think, I think her assessment is good, very good. Oh. No. Did you have an assessment? What's your assessment, Anna? Well, I thought She's Mom's student. assessment was not necessarily very good. The science part, she had seemed like from Mom's assessment, the science is very good, but then there were a few concerns, the subtle differences <coughs> yeah. that she was detecting. Yes, that's that's what I meant. That's what the assessment was, was was excellent assessment. Oh, you're talking about the assessment, not... Yes, uh, yes. yes I'm talking about the assessment. The assessment. I was, He's evaluating what I said. He's evaluating what you said, but you're evaluating. Oh. And, and, and she's evaluating the textbooks. And so you're I think. Not, you're trying real hard, Anna. Okay. Do you I, have your own assessment as a student? What is your assessment of these Christian but textbooks? I, 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 I have my own question. What do you do? Two but questions. Is you get two questions? You're following this. You're follow up. You're follow up. Well, um, <clears throat> I guess what I remember, um. Most from BJ Press was actually their um, video classes I got for science. Um, I started in eighth grade with the biology, and then I, uh, well, no, 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 that's not right. Physical science. I started with physical science in eighth grade, and then biology in ninth grade, and then chemistry in tenth grade. And then I stopped using the um, the uh, Bob Jones material, but the the um, instructors that I did have, I had two because um, it was the same instructor for um, physical chemistry. 
physical no, science. Physical science, not physical chemistry. That's <laughs> chemistry. Uh, and chemistry, physical science and chemistry, I had the same instructor for. So I got to see him again <laughs> a couple of years later. Um, and then for biology, I had a different instructor. And actually, um, that particular video class was the whole reason, whole thing that got me interested in biology. Hmm. Previously, I had been like a history buff. I mean, I still am a history buff. I felt like I feel like in high school, my, I mean, my my interests expanded, and so. But I mean, I feel. <sighs> The bio biology class was like a defining, like, what? You liked your teacher, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not explaining myself very well because I'm tired. Okay. But, okay, so I'll answer the next question. So I like I like the science classes. I don't really remember <coughs> the history ones too much right okay. now. That's a good explanation. Good. Uh, this the question. science department's Correct. good. Yes. I'm just saying that. From what she said. Yes, that's right, that's right. Let's turn down this. At some... least for the, for the um, BJU Press. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the university is like, but I've been there. Okay, question number 13. Who sometimes, quote, failed to provide the academic quality and spiritual atmosphere needed in the schools they sponsor, end of quote? Which question is this? Question 13. Uh, it says here, churches with lack of experience and knowledge in the field of education. Yes. So, so the churches themselves are sponsoring the schools. So they fail to provide what is needed for these schools they're sponsoring, uh, sadly. Um, let me see. Uh, Elaine, question number 14. significant expression of American fundamentalism, and, and two, do you agree with his assessment? Uh, he said uh, the Christian school movement will endure. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think that everything will crumble except uh, the fundamentals of the Bible itself. Okay. All right. It's good, good assessment. So there, these are these are these questions aren't written very well in this quiz or you know, I'm not getting you um mixed up mixed up there. Uh, Tammy, you have a thought, and then Jill have a thought there. Go ahead. Well, I was thinking of what's happening even right now, mm -hmm. and many of the Christian schools are leaving their foundations, and um, you know they're not really fundamental at all. Mm -hmm. They're very, more concerned with the approval of the world than they are with um, and, and, and their accrediting mm -hmm. agencies. Yes. I mean, even at the high school and the day school level, there's those accrediting agencies, mm -hmm. and um, you know they're very the student body is very world. That's right. And Jill? Well, <clears throat> I basically was going to say what Tammy said, I guess in slightly different words. And I, and I agree with both Tammy and Bill in the sense I, mean, I don't fully agree that these um, schools will remain and are remaining a significant expression of uh, American fundamentalism. I mean, they're already going by the wayside. They're already uh, abandoning different um, tenets of uh, fundamentalism. And uh, the proper doctrine, the doctrine, not that we say, but that God upholds a standard in the Bible, mm -hmm. and inerrancy, and like, all the stuff they're just abandoning. And, um, question again. Really so we're kind of like, the 15 my eyes were just drifting here for all about scribbling on everything. <laughs> yeah, but the schools, yeah, have become very secular in nature, that will have mm -hmm. so. 
a lot of these so-called <clears throat> Christian schools. That's right, they have been. Bill? Uh, David Cloud had said it a number of times. Uh, he wrote reports on it, articles, and he also wrote a book on the subject, a mm -hmm. book I haven't seen. But it's basically the uh, independent fundamentalist Baptist church is eventually going to go emerging mm -hmm. in 20 years. And it's because of the decay, uh, the breakdown uh, of fundamentalism in all the fundamentalist churches. Things are just going that mm -hmm. way. Uh, that's, uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about uh, 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 the future. Uh, because of that, because the Bible does give a very good picture of the way mm -hmm. things are getting bad, but I want to understand that a little bit better. Right. And, uh, a prophecy, I think, is uh, the subject uh, matter for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just all seems to be going that way. Right. Mm -hmm. We have a history of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's, it's going the wrong way. Uh, number six. Go ahead. Oh, we, we had five children. Mm -hmm. And four went to public schools and one went to Christian school. I thought the Christian school was okay, but I didn't go. But well, would you say it was an expression of American fundamentalism? I don't, I don't know what an expression of American fundamentalism is. I mean, uh, that's a, it may, perhaps it, <coughs> it could have been a borderline expression of American fundamentalism. But, I don't but know. I think he's he's looking at it from a historical standpoint. And saying historically, I mean, he's not looking at a historical standpoint. He's looking at a, a futuristic standpoint. But he's looking, he's, his observations are from the past. When the Christian schools movement started, they were started in fundamental churches. Mm -hmm. They started the Christian schools, mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. And so he was saying it's an expression, expression, and he's he's, he's believing it's going to remain a significant expression in the future. And your thought. Uh, well, I just wanted to comment. Okay, please do. Uh, because this was uh, copyrighted in 1986. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the time period at which something is was written is relevant when they're talking about the yes. future. Mm -hmm. Because the future is now the past. That's we're correct. We're in the future now. Right. 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 Well, right. Yes, we're still in the future, but it, it's we're also... It, from the standpoint of 19, 1996. Part of the part of the part of the eighty six future is now in our past. Yes, that's right. right. That's correct. Got uh, came in and found that. Um, some of the things that Bill had mentioned, um, uh, I don't know how many years ago. I'm thinking it was more than five years ago. I looked at the World Council of Christian Churches. Mm -hmm. Um, and the list of churches that, it, or I think it was the World Council, it could have been the National Council, mm -hmm. but the, all the churches that have signed on, you won't believe who signed on. You mm -hmm. should look at it. Mm -hmm. It gives all the, all the churches as far as the different denominations, and, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of them are uh, Bible believing, mm -hmm. fundamental. It's very scary. Right. Where did you find that again? On the oh, World okay. Council of Christian mm. Churches oh, website. What, uh, what, what, oh, what is it? Someone else has I, I don't know. Oh, you just have to do a Google. Huh? Someone else has a voice. Your thoughts? Oh, we'll just Google. Google. Oh, yeah. Christian yeah. Churches. Yeah. Uh, you're the only one here that went to a Christian school, so what was it like for you? I'd be interested in knowing. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Was it better than the public school, or was it the same? Was it better than being homeschooled? He was I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so question number... You're not saying anything. <laughs> I'm interested in this question. Well, it's off topic a little bit. Okay. It's off topic a little bit. I don't bit. think he wants to talk about it right now. Uh, okay, I Question <laughs> number 16, please. I can ask. <clears throat> what is the name of the historic meeting that took place in Usher Hall in 1976? Oh, World Congress of Fundamentalism. The first World Congress of Fundamentalism. Number um, oh, seven. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we were talking about, oh, was that what it was in, in the first one? Yes. In 1876? In 1976. No, but, but I, I was taking it as what happened 100 years before. Okay. Because they were celebrating a 100-year anniversary. Okay, I misunderstood okay. the question. Yeah, what was the question? 
I agree. Was that the believers meeting? Or yes, was that, uh, at Swamp Cut? I think it was. Mm-hmm. Okay. It said in 1976, mm-hmm. so that's... Right, chill number uh, 17, please. He preached a sermon entitled The Faith, the Far, and the Fight of the Fundamentalists. Uh, Ian or K. Paisley. That's right. Uh, good. Uh, team and the right team. Who preached the closing address entitled The Heritage and Hope of Fundamentalism? Dr. Bob Jones, Jr. That's right, Bob Jones, Jr. Um, okay, on number 19. Uh, what is the common purpose for fundamentalists? A common purpose for fundamentalists? Uh, to uphold the scripture. Okay, that's good. It's good to uphold the scriptures. Well, to defend the faith. That's good. That's the, that's Without division and compromise. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I put Even the apostates will say that. Yeah, you have to defend the faith, yeah, but without division or compromise. The faith. The faith. With the article. With, with so the article. The body of doctrine, mm-hmm. which is found in the words of God. That's right? correct. Yeah, I, so that was correct? I, I, I visited uh, some uh, churches in the area that uh, believe that uh, their interpretation of Scripture is uh, is right, even though they say Jesus was the Son of God, he was not actually God, mm, yeah. uh, or something like that. They believe it, so they say that they're, and they tell their people mm-hmm. that they're defending uh, the Scriptures, mm. and they hold to the Scriptures 100%, but they don't. No, they don't do that. They don't? No, we have to yeah. learn to see through it ourselves. Yeah, they're using doublespeak. Yeah, they're they're redefining the terms, uh, being new orthodox. Yeah, uh, in their in their definition of words and terms. Tammy, to follow up on that. Um, I just want to. I, I saw that in the previous paragraph. Okay. Um, let's see. It says, "Paul is in defense of the faith of Scripture and is concerned with the salvation of lost." It says, "Fundamentalism is military orthodoxy set on fire with soul and zeal." Okay. Mm-hmm. So I mean. There's, I mean, you asked about the purpose, yes. so I was wondering mm-hmm. if, if that was, it had, yeah, that had be, something with, to do with soul winning. That would be part of it, yes. Mm-hmm. Concern for the lost, being a non-universalist and right, so forth. Right, right. Uh, let me see where we leave off here. Um, I was going to uh, Elaine and Paul, number 20, please. Philippines, and then actually they did something in Singapore for a brief period of time. Uh, number 21, Bill. What was the title of Paisley's sermon? Stand Therefore. Right. Stand Therefore. And uh, 22, Mom. Wilbur Smith had a great sermon called Therefore Stand. He did. Wilbur Smith wrote a book. He, he was one of my teachers at Moody, and he was uh, okay. a, a, some big Bible teacher. 22, who met with the witnesses to present Ferdinand Marco? During the conference, Paisley and Jones. Right. Who met with and witnessed to. Is that, the, is that what it says or not? Did I get that wrong? Yeah, we know what says, says, I just yes. said. Yes, right. Paisley and Jones. Uh, That's interesting. It is. Because Marcus, his wife was really scandalized with the shoes. Yeah. yeah. What was it, a thousand shoes? Or I've something? been thinking about commenting on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right Jill, uh, Jill, number 23, please. It was it a thousand pairs or a thousand? Oh, yeah. pairs, I think. <laughs> like that. You know. What was the title of Bob Jones' uh, third <clears throat> closing time? Remember the former things of old. Oh, this was the third. Is this the third? Yes, mm-hmm. three oh. sticks. Bob Jones the third. I thought it was Junior. Well, we can cross reference on page three forty nine if you want to. I don't really know. I just assumed it was Junior. No, it was, it was, was in eighty six, was it? Yes, probably close. Yeah, that's right. Something around that time period. Uh, number 24, um, Tammy? Where was the third uh, World Conference of Fundamentalism, Fundamentalism held um, at Bob Jones University, Greenville, South Carolina? Mm-hmm. Can I 24? Um, <laughs> Anna, um, yeah, it's, uh, which one call it? It's uh, Wade Hampton Boulevard. That's right, it is. What's oh. the address, though? I forget the... He just said that, I think, didn't he? No, he said the zip code. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Wait, what's the question? Question number 25. Uh, what was the theme of the Fourth World Congress of Fundamentalism in 1986 
And where was the conference held? The theme. Okay. Uh, unto him shall be shall the gathering of the people be. Mm-hmm. It was held at BJU. It was. That's correct. It was held on BJU <laughs> again. So. Question because she was reading it. <laughs> Good. All right, so that's the, that's the quiz there. Um, now, interesting. Um, we have um, a little bit of a, re- a little bit of a reviewing history of fundamentalism today, plus uh, an oral exam. So, in our, in our review, we will be talking about what we some different things we learned, just trying trying to catch yeah. some of the uh, <laughs> some of the, um, the high points of, of what we discussed in this class. So, Tammy. Can we use our books? If you want to. If you want to use your books, you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, so getting, getting back to um, to the, the, the beginning of the book, around page six or so, um, uh, Elaine, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, what what are two aspects of holiness? If you remember, uh, Bill, at the very beginning of the book, that was talking about holiness. But what, what are the two aspects of holiness? There's two aspects. If you only get one aspect, or maybe, maybe uh, it'd be better to put it, what are two aspects of separation? Elaine did yeah. miss the first couple yeah, she of classes, did. She did. So just in case she yes. feels stuck, someone else can help her. If you feel stuck, Elaine, we'll move on to the next person, because this was in the beginning. Uh, two aspects of separation. Page six. Page six. Okay, that's right. That's right, but we need some scripture. And also separation from apostate churches. So you have the two aspects of separation, the two aspects of holiness, are personal holiness, personal separation, and ecclesiastical separation. So we stay, we, we want to maintain our own, our own selves to be pure and holy and separate, separated. But we also have to, from an ecclesiastical standpoint, we don't want to be involved with other groups on the ecclesiastical at a church level. Um, so, so Bill, this is, um, we talked about this very, very beginning class, uh, first classes, but the, um, what are the five, this is coming off page seven for the most part, what are the five fundamentals of the faith? There's five fundamentals. Mm. What's one of them? Uh, I know it's right around here. The inerrancy of Scripture, for one thing. Okay. Christ's virgin birth Mm -hmm. and his deity. Yes. And his substitutionary atonement Mm -hmm. uh, for our sake and uh, biblical miracles. That's right. Um, well, thank you, Bill. So then the next question, uh, because Steve, but before I before I ask the question, uh, Needham, the um, where do you go? He's over there. On well, what date was that? That was July 29th at 10 a, 10 a.m. on July on Thursday, uh, Tuesday, July 29th. Needham made gave his address to the Clifton Springs Bible Conference, and so what were his six aspects? Of separation. Bernie? Yes. Page <laughs> <laughs> 25. Unto the Page Lord, 25. from sin, from self, from evil companionship, from the world, from the yoke. The yoke. Yeah, I just know this real good. <laughs> yoke and slavery, a worldly. Some kind of sessions. Are those right. exactly his words? Word possessions. I want to tell you, I'm getting a stomach ache because uh, I guess pre exam jitters. Oh, for example, don't, don't, don't get a stomach ache. This is, 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 is an easy question. This is an oral exam. Is it, no, it, uh, is it uh, um, para, para exam? Maybe. It could be. Uh, it, this, this is the, Let me ask you a question. Para, alongside. Sure, go ahead. What's your question? Do we know what happened to the Watkins? No, we don't know what happened to the Watkins. No, we don't. I, I, I just we wonder don't. what happened. I missed has. them. Yes, we do I miss did too, because I was watching out. That's what made me late, I guess, if yes. they never came. Mm-hmm. I was watching for them. 
I'm not sure uh, what, 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 if, if they're caught in traffic or... Ask them if they're listening. They're home, or, I mean, they... Yeah, I think, they, I think they're home, home, yeah. If you're... If you're, if you're yeah. I was if, looking forward to it. If you're listening, Brother Watkins, yes. uh, please uh, give us a phone call at uh, 856-816-7839 or that other phone number, 856, which is not on the screen, but remember, 856-854-4452. Please let us know you're okay. Yes. Where's the fellow? I'm going to keep the camera straight here. Jacob has a conflict in the schedule. Again? Yes. He wanted to take the test? He had a conflict in the schedule. Conflict in the schedule. Of course. I didn't show up for one of my exams. Right. And so, if you want to see the... You know, the swamp, uh, <coughs> the Clifton Springs Bottle Conference, we're more about that in Appendix B of the book. Okay. In Appendix B of the book. But, uh, but Jill, um, these the early Bible conferences, this is coming off page two, eight, uh, page 28, but um, what was one of the big questions during the Niagara Bible Conference? Uh, 98 to 95. <laughs> it, it dealt with uh, eschatology, Jill. What, was, what, what aspect of eschatology was it? The question was the rapture. The rapture. Yeah, when was the rapture going to take place? That's that's yeah. that's what was well, that one. That's what was happening. On. What was what was happening? The question of of um, pre-trib, post-trib. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I don't um, really know these answers. I'm so glad I'm not. Now, I'm not sure. I should skip to Anna for this one, or I should um. Give her. Well, we'll, we'll keep your turn. It was not. Won't be fair to skip to skip skip the mother to go to Anna. But, um, Why this one's really easy? Hey, well, you'll get it. No, just give it to Anna then. Okay. Wait, did we? Did Mrs. Sherman get one? She yes. got one. She got the time. Yeah, I guess I was, I was distracted. You, you can skip. I mean, it's one. possible. And then come back to I'll, me. I'll come back to you for number six, okay? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Uh, and the question number five comes off page thirty-seven. Um, in what war did Schofield serve, oh. and under whose command, and what awards did he receive? And what happened 150 years ago today? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Today is April. Um, it's it's April uh, 10th. 10th. Uh, okay, so 150 years ago. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, wow. Okay, that's interesting. Um, the war between the seas ended. That's we correct. Out, there was the 150th anniversary. I remember when the 150th anniversary began, and now it's all of a sudden over. Mm -hmm. What happened? I don't know. Well, anyway, so that must have mean he served uh, during the war between the states. Mm -hmm. And um, did he serve under Grant? No. Lee. That's right. He was a senator. <laughs> Scott was a senator. What award did he receive? Um. Uh, he wrote his medal. The Confederate. Oh, the Confederate. The Confederate Cross. Yes. Yeah, okay. I can answer your question. He was living in the South at the time, but he wasn't really a, a, a rooted in the South. So that's why he was. He uh, says he was reared in Tennessee. Yeah. Well, okay, so that's a border state. Yes, he was. He was in Tennessee. So it's, it says yeah. he was born in Michigan, but reared okay. in Tennessee. Okay. But he served in Lee's army, which means he wasn't fighting. Uh, uh, in the West, right. he was in uh, the, uh, yes, the right. Army of uh, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yes, Virginia. that's right. That's right. All right, Pam, we're going to go to your question, okay? I'm sorry, I thought Anna would be able to get most of that question number five. She did very well. You did. You did. You did excellent. I, I got the sides mixed up because I thought he was, I didn't remember where he was from. Okay. Uh, number, question number six is, uh, what two philosophies were confronting preachers and pastors in the 1800s. This is off of page 48. Darwinism and rationalism. That's right. Darwinism and rationalism. And uh, Paul and Elaine, let me see here. Your question comes off of page 62. Uh, what five things... Uh, what five things... Uh, uh, did Gordon desire to change at Clarendon Street Baptist Church? Yeah. On page 62. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to show? 
She's got it. Yeah, she got it right. Yeah. She's got it. Look at this. You got it, Elaine. That's super. Easter. She didn't even have to look. No, she didn't need it, but you could show it to everybody. So now, interesting enough, this is um, this is on the Facebook. This just showed up on the Facebook page. It just showed up. Yeah, it was there. I just it's there on Facebook page. What showed up? These 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 five characteristics of AJ Gordon's Clarity Street Baptist Church. It showed up today. It showed up today. Yes. Are you sure they weren't? Place there. They just they just show up all by themselves. Yes, I came this cash. Okay, because I came this cash. Okay. Question number uh, number eight, Bill. Eight. Number. What are we supposed to know? Well, this is question number eight. What's that? We have to know the questions too. <laughs> oh no! Okay, no, no. Okay. <laughs> question number eight is: uh, What is the photo of fundamentalism? Oh, that would be uh, liberalism. Liberalism. It still is. Liberalism, and it still is. an easy one. Even I yes. can figure that out. <laughs> okay, you didn't even have to look at the wall. It's good. No. It's a uh, number. Uh, okay. Next question. Is it my turn? Yes, it's your turn. I'm scared. Uh, don't be scared. It's going to be okay. Um, uh, what are three pillars of liberalism after the Civil War? This comes off page 80. From off of page 80. The three pillars of liberalism. Uh, evolution, Taoism. Compared to religion. <laughs> well, they're not just on page eighty. Okay, page eighty. They start on page eighty. They start on page eighty. Look at everything that's Compared in the Taoist. Oh, evolution. Uh, I don't know if Darwinism is one or not. Darwinism no, is one. Yes. Compared to religion, Atlantic Monthly. <laughs> I hear criticism. Criticism. Good. I don't know what it is. What that? Yeah, go ahead. Is it a mistake to say that Darwinism and evolutionism are co closely related and enough to be counted as one? Oh, I, I, they're right because I, I just made. She was up. just looking at the mm -hmm. italic words. It's not good. It depends on how you de define evolution. If you talk to a creationist mm -hmm. scientist, yes, he'll have a different uh, definition for evolution than what the evolutionary scientist would have. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, okay. a, 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 a dog can't evolve into a cat. No. Uh, but the different forms of, of dog can evolve out of other dogs. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think but generally... You mean variations, right? Generally yeah. when we hear evolution in like the, this context, we tend to equate it with macroevolution. Yes. Uh, I, th I think yeah. the, the context of this is means the same here. Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. Yes. All right, Jill, the question coming off of page 87 here, um, but the question is, uh, what was the objective of many American colleges in the early days? Many American colleges. The objective? Yes, the objective. What was the purpose? Why did they exist? All right, this is going back early. To advance learning and perpetuate it to prosperity. Um, trying to leave a literate ministry to the churches, but basically to advance learning and perpetuate it to posterity. The original purpose for the uh, school, for the Puritans. And also to prepare uh, ministers. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's right? sorry. I'm that's sorry, right. Joe. Train, to train, men, <laughs> train men for the <laughs> ministry. That's good. They did all the ministries. Yeah, that's very good. Exactly. Good. And then I noticed Moody Bob was to, was to um, train lay people. Okay, yes, that's right. That's Which right. I was interested in that. That is interesting, isn't it? So they could work in their churches. Mm -hmm. All right, question number 11, Tammy. Um, uh, name, um, this is coming off page 88, but name some of the top colleges of the day with biblical roots. Harvard College, Yale College, Princeton, Rutgers, Brown, Queens College, which was Rutgers. Um, King's College, which was Columbia, William and Mary, Princeton, Darton. Mm -hmm. She has that on the tip of her tongue. That's good. Yes, it's very good. <laughs> That's um, pretty rough. I know it. <laughs> and then this comes off page 120. Okay. Uh, the question is, but we probably won't need the book. Uh, page 120, the question is, what is the difference between strict subscriptionists and loose subscriptionists? <sighs> Well, the loose subscriptionist takes a, um, well, <laughs> <laughs> the loose 
boost subscription X. Um, they take a, uh, how can I say it without repeating the word? Um, they take a, uh, a free, a, a freer interpretation mm -hmm. of the passage, whereas the strict constructionist uh, takes it takes it very literally and contextually, whereas like they're they're very much into the specific words that are used in the book of song, whereas the um, loose constructionists mm -hmm. they look at the general idea and the thoughts. I thought, but, but see, uh, each word is significant. Yes. Because there are different ways you can say things, mm -hmm. and the, the the basic idea may be the same, but how you say it and what word you use are very important because that communicates tone and um, many other things. Yes. And I can't think straight right now. That's okay. <laughs> that was very good. That's a good good answer. Uh, Paul and Elaine, now the uh, the question is: uh, What have Presbyterians historically valued? What have they historically valued? Experience? Yes. Okay. Page 127. What's something they've historically valued? No, I don't know. No, for something else. That's right. An educated ministry. Oh, she's um, good. An educated ministry. And Bill, coming off of page 135. How did she get that so fast? Uh, coming off page 135, the question I have for you is, uh, for what three things was the old school theology at the old Princeton known? Uh, Orthodox Calvinism, Scottish common sense, philosophy, and modern revivalist spirituality. That's right. The, um, I was lucky. You saw it right there. I, I, I didn't guess it because I knew. Right. I had those those lines underlined in my book. That's good. I um, uh, this coming off page one thirty nine. Uh, one thirty nine. Page, well, page one thirty nine. The question is, what Baptist fundamentalist spoke at Princeton Seminary? Well, no, he's not Baptist. Uh, was it? Uh, A.J. Gordon? Yeah, that's correct. A.J. Yeah, Gordon. I, oh, I know that. A.J. Gordon, that's good. I know that myself. Good. You do, you do. Um, <laughs> off of uh, Jill, page, this comes off of page 143. I want to say, I want, when I did Fanny Crosby, yes. I wanted to talk, I talked about A.J. Gordon being there. And since we've studied that, I know more about him. Yes. And I wanted to share that Monday with the people. Okay. And I had a blank. And I couldn't even remember the A.J. Gordon. Hmm. And I just talked, oh, I can't remember, can somebody else be? And I even asked them, I said, mister, could you help me? They, but he didn't help me. And as I went on, then it came to me, but I'd wasted so much time okay. not remembering. I couldn't tell about him. Okay. <laughs> I really enjoyed learning about Good. him. Good. Excuse me. I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the class, but mm -hmm. I learned about him. All right, so page, page 143, um, Joe, what... Uh, Continued to plague the Presbyterian Church in the 19th century. Um, I see here. Oh wait a second. That's on the top. <clears throat> Questions concerning acceptable degrees of doctrinal latitude. That's right. Doctrinal latitude. Uh, doctrinal latitude. Um, uh, Tammy, this comes off page 144. Uh, the question is, what are three things that swing are wrongly believed? Swing? Swing, yes. David Swing, on page 144. That, um, oh, <laughs> there were no absolutes. That's right. And all things were in a state of flux. He swung yes, back and forth. <laughs> 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 um, biblical errancy was a, a doctrine for the simple and insecure souls who needed something tangible to worship. Now, this perfect, is something this perfect model for the emerging church. Well, he, he was. This is something I, I, I came across on the Facebook page. Um, <laughs> it says it says on the Facebook page. This is part of what's on the Facebook page. It says Sean Lucas observes. It says what Tammy just said. Plus, it says Sean Lucas observes on his uh, Reformation 21 blog. I need this is a quote from the blog. It Who's says Sean he's a guy that writes in the Reformation 21 blog. Okay. Um, <laughs> he, says, he says, quoting him, he says, most people don't know who David Swing was, 
But in the 1870s and 1880s, David Swin was the most popular minister in Chicago, hmm. bigger than D.L. Moody, more, than, more significant than anyone else. As Swing's New York Times obit, meaning obituary, I suppose, obviously put it, at one point, he had a, the largest church and the largest salary of any minister in Chicago. And so that's, uh, that's uh, Sean Lucas's view of who, uh, who Swing was. And notice what he, what he wrongly believes. As Hammond says, no absolutes. All things are in a state of flux. And biblical inerrancy was for the simple and insecure. And so the, the point being, how his influence he had. Hey, uh, Anna, go ahead. Perhaps he was the one who was insecure. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay, uh, and this comes up page 154. Off 154. Uh, the question is, what three doctrines did Fosdick deem not essential? Hmm. Inerrancy. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> oh, virgin birth. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> something else. The physical... Oh, the physical resurrection. The, body the physical return, oh, the physical of return. Yes, the physical return of Christ. The physical return of Christ. The bodily resurrection. I'm not sure what his position on the bodily resurrection is. Well, I was being given a hint. Yes. She got the first one by herself. That's good. All right, number, number 19, uh, Paul Elaine. This question. comes off page uh, 155 and 156, this question. Uh, the question is, um, what is the Auburn affirmation of December 26, 1923? What is it? Uh, coming from page uh, 155 and 156, what is the Auburn affirmation? Is um, I right, just tell me what the Auburn affirmation is. Uh, uh, who did Patton nominate to follow him in the office of president at Princeton University? Page 156. I don't have to go to war with this, but... Um, Would the name Patton be it? Patton. No. Maybe I got my page number wrong. Maybe the page number is the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> So we have to find, I guess I got my page number wrong, so I'm sorry about that, Bill. Um, yes. How do you spell that? P-A-T-T-O-N-T-O. Yes, that's right. Could it have been J. Gresham Machen anyway? No, that's No, cool. Machen was a student there, that's right. This is Princeton University. Oh. Somebody, somebody, this, this, this is somebody who didn't stop at being the president of the university. Oh, is Francis L. Patton? Yes, I don't think so. Let's see the page 31, page 130, 131, page 143, 144, 167. Patton nominate to follow him to the office of president at Princeton University? Who also got us into World the War I. Was he also president of the seminary? No. He was the president of something bigger than the seminary. Pat, Patton was. But oh. this, 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 this man here. Oh, so he was just president of the university. He brought David Swing to trial. Well, yes, I know he was president of something much bigger, but. Alright. Something that. Yes, I know who it is. But he wasn't born in Hawaii. Uh, Tammy. Well, of course he was. I think it, it's um, J. Ross Stevenson. Is that right? No. That's not the answer I'm looking for. Uh, 165. But, but that's the answer. I said 166. I mean, he, 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 
He, he, he actually got the country into a war. He kept us out of Woodrow war. Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. He, he kept us out Woodrow of Woodrow Wilson. Yeah. Woodrow Wilson, that's the answer. <laughs> and Woodrow. Then, and then, then he didn't keep us out of war. Woodrow Wilson, okay, thank you. He keep Woodrow us out of war. Oh, that was the campaign. That was his logo. That was the re-election Slugging. campaign. He Slugging. kept us out of war because there was war going on in Europe. But he was maintaining an isolationist policy. But then in his second term, we got involved. I'm yeah. sorry, but I got the, I got the wrong page out of the way. No, 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 Wilson. Yes. Well, so there is a the historical friend. fact, too, that's which right. is, that's is missing in there. Okay. Wilson knew Wilson in advance in the, yes, he did. the sinking of the Lusitania. He was aware of that fact. Yeah. Yeah. He was aware of that fact. He was aware that he was, that he was going to go to war. <laughs> yes, that's right. He was. Okay, this is coming off page 165, I think. The next time we, we need the right page. Right. Yes, that's right. It depends on this page, uh, too. What is the old adage? Mom, go ahead. That's your The old adage? What is the old adage? It used to be on the wall. Which old adage do we want? We want to pick one to describe. You can give me any old adage, but what's, what's the old adage? About Princeton. That's Princeton. Oh, the old oh. adage. As the seminaries go, so does the denomination. That's correct. I had help on that. That's right. <laughs> no, I had right here. Good job, Joe. Now, um, let me see who you can. Joe, you get the next next question. Um, Don't count on me. <laughs> uh, Joe, this is coming off page 173. Um, on 173, give the names of the two Baptist churches in America, the two names of the two oldest Baptist churches in America, uh, when they were established and their first pastors. Um. Was it the, um, let's see, the General Missionary Convention of the Baptist Denomination in the United States of America? Four missions? Let's see. Commonly known simply as the Tri Any Convention? The first the convention. Actual, the actual churches. names of the churches. Oh, wait. I'm reading so fast, I'm going to the bottom real fast. <laughs> first line. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. First Baptist Church in Providence, Rhode Island, and the first. Now United Baptist Church in Newport, Rhode Island. That's right, there's names, First Baptist Church. They both have the same name, but a different, different. And the pastor. <laughs> so which one was first? <laughs> There's a controversy. Really? Um, you said the pastor too. The name of the pastor. What's the name of the pastor? Pastor. Um, Just give me the one from the Rhode Island uh, Show. It's fine. Well, Roger Williams, the mm -hmm. pastor of the um, Providence Church, and Dr. John Clark, the pastor of the Newport Church. That's right. That's right. Uh, Tammy, question. The next question, number twenty-three, uh, page one seventy-seven. Uh, what three things? Did Strong adopt after coming to Rochester Theological Seminary? <coughs> Page. Um, the atheistic evolution. Mm -hmm. A low view of the Bible's inspiration and pantheistic ideas. Okay. And uh, Strong wrote his large theological, systematic theology book. Uh, but he's not necessarily connect, he's not connected with the concordance. Different strong. Was it different strong? You didn't specify which strong in the question, did you? No, uh, I, I knew. I missed Hopkins Augustus. So on the web page it says Augustus Hopkins strong. The question says um, I may have not specified. This is about the web page. Not the web page. The, the Facebook page. Okay, we're fine. Uh, Augustus Hopkins somehow he's on the uh, Augustus Hopkins strong. He somehow. showed up on the web. He showed up on the uh, Facebook page. Up? You mean you put the Strong's Concordance guy there? No, no, this other Strong. I guess it's Hopkins Strong. Oh, the other's James Strong. Strong. The other's James. Yeah. I guess it's Hopkins. It had nothing to do with the... Um, okay. You see the, he showed up there in his strong. picture? He's, he's, he's not as strong this quote. as the other Strong. Uh -huh. This quote. What's that? No, he's not. Well, the other Strong the other was strong not that strong, strong either. either. Okay. <laughs> number, uh, let me see, number 24. Um, <laughs> and from page 186. Okay. Um, for page 186, uh, what four things were fundamentalists within the NBC from 1919 to 1927 concerned? Okay, um, I think he's... You see that? Yeah, okay. So, I guess there was, um, the, the autonomy of the local church was being reduced. Yes. And there was also modernism, mm -hmm. theological like in yes. schools and so forth and so on. Uh, there were mission field concerns. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what inclusivism means exactly. Uh, in the absence 
of the denominational confession of faith. Oh, yes. The NBC didn't have a confession of faith and still doesn't. That's correct. Well, actually, actually, now it's the NBC. 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 Yes. So the NBC um, was brought out by the AP. No. That's right. That's right. All right, uh, Paul and Lane, uh, question, uh, next question. Uh, what was the Des Moines Confession missing? What was it missing? The Des Moines Confession of Faith. What was it missing? On page 204. Oh, I see. <laughs> Facebook too? No, this is not on Facebook. This is Miss, Miss Facebook. Oh. Well, I remember writing that one. It's probably there, it's probably there someplace then. It's not just there. It's not. <laughs> it was on a poster. <laughs> yes, the, it, is, it is on a poster. It used I to be up here. That one. Yes. <laughs> um, let me see. Bill, your question. This is coming from, um, from page 208. What did a wolf can acknowledge on his deathbed? Mm. Oh. From his dead deathbed, Wolfkin wrote to I am Haldeman. I trust in that infinite redeeming grace which forgives my sins through the merits of the cross and cleanses my soul through the blood of Jesus Christ. I acknowledge Jesus as being my divine Savior, my Lord, my God, my all. Uh, he had a change of position, I think. He did. He did. <coughs> And uh, let me see, no, Mom, this is coming from 2.12, uh, in, from page 2.12 of the world, or the BBU, or the world of the Baptist Union, um, who were the big three? Uh, so. Riley, 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 Riley was one of the big three. Uh, Fort Norris. Norris was another one. Oh, T.T. Oh, yeah. Shields. Okay, T.T. Shields, that's correct. T.T. Shields. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, Jill, uh, this is coming from page 212. 212. The fundamentalist fellowship in the GBU were different in what three ways? 212? Oh, um. <clears throat> no. Okay. Uh, so the first one, the fellowship yeah. included only Northern Baptists with occasional guest speakers from other groups, the Union included Northern, Southern, and Canadian Baptists. Secondly, the Union had an official recorded membership. The fellowship did not. And thirdly, the Union was far more militant than the fellowship. Okay, yeah, that's good. That was on page 212? 212, huh? Uh, page uh, 226, uh, Tammy. Uh, who was the Spurgeon of the Pacific? Who's been called the Spurgeon of the Pacific? Page. Hinson. Hinson, that's right. Hinson. W. B. Hinson. Walter Fenwell in his class. Huh? Was and uh, Anna. This comes from page uh, 227. What were the What was the objective of the Hinson resolution? It resolved something. No, Hinson. I don't know if it actually did resolve anything. though. I don't remember. Hmm. But I am being given information, or maybe I am not being given information. I don't really know. What was the question? On page 227, what was the objective of the Hinson resolution? Okay. Separation from to uh, all disobedience. 
purge all liberals from the Northern Baptist Foreign oh. Mission Board. That's right. Oh, a purge. Right. That's right. The purge of liberalism from the and from the Northern Baptist Mission Board. Okay. Uh, Paul and Elaine, the next, next question is what was W.B. Riley's okay. resolution on page 232? His resolution of, of 1926 coming out on page 232. You think you wouldn't think you would have to make a resolution for this, being a Baptist, but nonetheless, what was uh, Riley's resolution on 1926 uh, coming from page uh, 232? Riley's His resolution on Mac 26. Hmm? It's Paul and Lee's turn. Well, what's, what's the characteristic of a, of a, of a typical Baptist church, uh, Paul, Paul, or Elaine? Okay. A ba Baptist church. <laughs> immersion, that's right, immersion. Uh, the, he wanted to make an immersion a prerequisite for church membership in an NBC church. Who said that? Who said it? Hmm? Hey, Paul. Riley. Riley. Oh, yes. Good. Riley, it's Riley's resolution. Uh, Bill, this is coming off page uh, 232, this question. Uh, who were two early board members of Faith Theological Seminary, and what churches did they pastor? Mm. On page 232. 232. I think it's the wrong page. It's the wrong page. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the wrong page. Here. Okay. A theological seminary that would be. Might be part of like 332, maybe. 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 Oh, I'm not sure what it is. It's, 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 I don't think it's quite that far back. We're supposed to know this by heart. Yeah. <laughs> right. no, I think uh, Carl McIntyre was uh, oh, one of them because he helped establish 323. 323. 323. 323. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, McIntyre kind of got in the wrong spot there. It did. Yeah. Yeah. It did get in the wrong spot. What was Thanks. the question again? It comes off page 333. Not 333 is the question. It says 323. 323. And the question is name two early board members of Faith Theological Seminary. David Otis Fuller of Wealthy Street Baptist yes. Church in Grand Rapids and William R. McCarroll of Cicero Bible Church in Cicero, Illinois. Okay. Since we've mentioned uh, David Otis Fuller, there's something else that popped up on the Facebook page. Dean of Interest Society. Yes, that's right. But this, this is what it says. Um, it, says it says, very sad observation about the Mother Church of Wealthy Park Baptist Church, which was the church that David Otis Fuller pastor, Pastor Fletch Fuller. Uh, this is from, they have the two quotes here. One is from the... Um, so the Mother Church was the church that planted it. Yes, the Mother Church was the church that planted it. Planted what? Planted Wally Wally Park Street. or Wally Street. Okay. Um, this, the, the first quote is from um, University of Michigan Archives. Okay. They, have, they have like a nine and a half feet drawer of just the sermons and other things, but they have lots of information about Wealthy Park, Wealthy Street, Baptist the Church, oh. the University of Michigan Library. Okay. But the, uh, this is a quote, the church originally established as a Sunday school mission of Fountain Street Baptist Church in 1875. The church was officially incorporated as Wealthy Street Baptist Church in 1886. In 1988, following the move of the church to the Grand Rapids suburbs, the name was changed to Wealthy Park Baptist Church. This is from what Lisa Hum said on the uh, University of Michigan website. But what is um, what's interesting? It said it was, it was a, it's a mission of Fountain Street Baptist Church, which is also Michigan, right there in Grand Rapids. Now, when you go to Fountain Street Baptist Church, uh, their their website, it says uh, Fountain Street Baptist Church was founded in 1869, so it was founded just maybe you know seven years or so before they made the plant, six or seven years, six years before they made the plants of all the Street Baptist Church. But it says. It was founded in 1869 as Fountain Street Baptist Church, gradually embracing more liberal ideas between 1896 and 1962, 
the church went from being Fountain Street Baptist Church to being Fountain Street Church, a non credo, non denominational liberal church. This is what they call themselves. They call themselves a non credo, non denominational liberal church. This is Fountain Street Baptist Church. That's, that's somehow, somebody put that put that up on the web, not the web page, the Facebook page. Uh, go ahead, your, your thoughts. Is Fountain Street Baptist Church the one that had homosexual stuff that we read about in here? That, no, that was, that was another, another church, I think. Another church? I think mean, it was another church. Um, out, out of the West Coast someplace. Oh, yeah. I believe. Golden, golden yeah. something. Okay. okay, so let me see here. We go to the next question, and and Bill, you got that you had that trick question. So, um... Who gets the next? The next question here is for um, uh, on page 237, Mom, 237. Who was the Spurgeon of Canada? From page 237, who was the Spurgeon of Canada? Uh, was that T.T. Shields? T.T. Shields, that's right. T.T. Shields was the Spurgeon of, uh, of Canada. And Joel, from coming off page 246, I think, um, what was the title of Harry Emerson Fosdick's neoliberal Sermon of 1935. The church must go beyond modernism. The church must go beyond modernism. Is that 246? Yes, that's right, 246. Now, Tammy, coming off of page 247, who was the father of neo orthodoxy? Karl Barth. Karl Barth. That's correct, Karl Barth. Um, Uh, Paul E. Lane. Uh, what term did Harold Ockengate coin in 1948 at a speech given at Fuller Theological Seminary? From page 261. Yeah. What did Harold J. Ockengay coin in a speech given to Fuller Theological Seminary in 1948? What term? New Evangelical. That's right. New Evangelical. Evangelical. That's what he coined the term. Uh, Bill. This is coming from page 264. What did Billy Graham? Except by the late 1950s. <laughs> or whose sponsorship did he accept by the late 1950s? He accepted the sponsorship of liberals. That's right, he accepted the sponsorship of liberals. He was a member of First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Hmm. Uh, there's something you know, it was, he got his uh, honorary doctorate from a Catholic university. I don't see that here though. And from a fundamental university, too, another one. Oh, he got an, uh, another one from a fundamental. You got the fundamental one first, I think. Wow. Bob Jones, right? Yes, that's right. Oh, okay. But it changed. All right, question. The next question. An observation. Uh, Billy Graham used to be. Uh, talked equivalently of by the sword of the Lord, John R. Rice, oh. one time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But then he had to disclaim him. Right. And John Rice also praised uh, modern versions of the Bible, too. Mm -hmm. He did, didn't he? Yeah. It's horrible, isn't it? Come on, page 273, the next question. Yes. What did the Baptist Bible Union become? The General Association of the Baptist Church. That's right, that's right. Uh, Jill, uh, this question is from page two, 273. Oh, page 273. What, who were the big three leaders of the BBU, and what did they join? Riley, Norris, and Shields. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Well, they never... Let's see. None of the big three attended this meeting or they were joined. So they never joined the GARBC. That's right. Yeah. And the GRBC, they never joined it. Uh, Tammy, uh, next question is um, from page 273. 
What did the General Association of Regular Baptist Churches affirm at its founding? Separatist position <coughs> against all forms of liberalism. That's right. A separatist position against all forms of liberalism. We need to revisit their original so affirmation. Yes, that's correct. Oh, I see it there. Yeah, I have uh, Paul and Elaine, next question from page 290. For how many years did the fundamental scholarship try to remain within the Northern Baptist Convention? That's the question again. For how many years did the Fundamentalist Fellowship try to remain within the Northern Baptist Convention, coming from page 290? The, um, it's, this is kind of a confusing number here, but um, the number I'm looking for is for 44. If we look at page 290 near the bottom, after we have a list of the of the 12 presidents, at least up until that time of, of this writing, uh, the, the first 10 of these presidents, in other words, presidents 1 to 10, with the exception of anyone except Winnegar and, and uh, Bell, uh, the first 10 of them represent the first 44 years. So during, their, during these first 44 years, they were, they, were, uh, they were kind of functional within the NBC until they finally withdrew themselves from the NBC. Uh, so from page 309, uh, who recommended to Bob Jones, Sr., that he keep the chapel pie from hot? Uh, I remember somebody saying that. <laughs> You have a friend from elementary school that has a name similar to this, but you have to add, put an ending on it. So then your bar, right? Yes, you have to put you have on, on, on the end. No, Ben or Bar. Ben or Bar, yes. Henry C. Morrison. That's right, Henry C. Morrison. That's right. Who's Daniel Barr? <laughs> no, no, we're... Bar means son. Bar means son. Ben means son. Ben means son. Uh, the next question comes from page, from page, remember Bible study the last two weeks? Yes. We're talking about Bar and Ben and so forth. You mean Son of. Son of. Oh, yes, His Son of. His friend is oh, Morris. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does Bill mean in ancient Hebrew? <laughs> genius. <laughs> it's got beautiful genius. I don't know. I'm not sure what it means. But what That's the an accurate description of <laughs> me. <laughs> We'll have, we'll have to cross reference to make sure that's correct. Or not. Uh, number uh, next. The next question comes from page three twelve. Um, Is this my question? Name, yeah, they, that's right. Name one of the uh, groups within the fundamentalist uh, Methodist that um, are still are still separated. Separated. They're separated. Yes. Mm -hmm. They still have them. Page three two. Yeah, three, page three twelve. According to the, as of the writing of this book. Evangelical Methodist Church of America. Donald McKnight, they were in the uh, ACC. <coughs> Is that the right answer? Yeah, I'm looking. Oh, they're down here. Yes. Oh, they're all down here. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm looking for the, the five groups that fall within the scope of fundamentalism within the Methodist Church. Yes, said okay. The American yeah. Association of Bible Believing yes. Methodists, Asbury Bible Churches, the Evangelical Methodist Church of America, the Fellowship of Independent Methodists, the Fundamental Methodist Church, the Association of Independent Methodists. Okay, and uh, Jill. This question comes from page 234. Way back, we go back. No, probably page 324. 
Thank you. We'll go way back. Page 324. Uh, what three major issues caused division between the OPC and the BPC? Um, okay. I have a circle, but I do a lot of reading here if you don't mind. So, sure. The first was the question of whether the OPC should continue to conduct its foreign missions through an independent agency in cooperation with uh, <clears throat> non Presbyterians. Um, the second issue was a moral one centering on the question of whether the denomination should officially recommend to its members total abstinence from intoxicating beverages. And the third issue was doctrinal concerning eschatology. OPC leaders included both <clears throat> premillennialists and amillennialists. While the Bible Presbyterians were exclusively premillennial. Yes, that's good. Good job. And uh, on the Facebook page, um, if you obviously you know just look, looking over that recently, it says uh, some historians wonder if things might have been different had John Gresham Machen, who lived from 1881 to 1937, had died, had not died at the young age of 55. I'm not certain things would have been better or perhaps worse had he lived another 30 years. And as Joel just said, there were three major divisions um, that caused them, you know, the um, missions, the church, the eschatology. But interesting enough, the OPC, OPC Machen had it, he had helped establish the OPC, but he also helped establish this independent board for Presbyterian for missions. And the OPC didn't want to go with it, which caused the break. That was one of the, one of the reasons the break happened. A very board that Machen himself, the founder of the OPC, one of the founders of the OPC, has had established. Um, Mr. Tammy, uh, the next question, from page 341, page 341, and it's, um, what did the 1950s bring to American religious culture? That's right, that's what I'm looking for. Brought new evangelicalism. Uh, CCM, too. And CCM, too, all this, all this. Uh, Paul M. Lane, from page 362, from page 362, what are the three elements of landmark Baptists? Page 362. And what was the other one, Elaine? That's right. And also, they believe that Christ um, started the church with uh, with his disciples, mm -hmm. including the seventh, the, the one that, that portrayed him. Uh, number 47, though. Um, could, could, we, could we go over those three things? Yeah. The church started with Christ and his disciples, or his apostles, and his apostles, uh, the rejection of the universal church, and the church in the Bible is local. There's a lot of, oh, there's some overlapping there, but that's that's what they're, what they're, what they believe, some of the things they believe. Got it? Yeah, I, don't, I can't find any page of this. Um, On page 262. I see, okay. 262? Pardon me, 362, thank you. Page 362. I can't really see there are any ideas. If you look, if you look right, like, um, I see that they reject any idea of the universal church. Like the only church in the Bible is local until 1857. I forget what right. he said, but that's interesting because a lot of people we know are landmarks. Mm, that's right, they, they are. They're not landmark, but they are right. landmarks. Mm -hmm. All right, now next, the next question comes from page 368. Why was the American Council of Christian Churches established? From Mom, page 368. Why was it established? Is my turn? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was Bill. Oh, Bill. Bill gave. No, wait, wait. I'm sorry, Bill. I missed you. That's right. You want to go ahead? You take. You take the question. I'm sorry. I missed you. Page 368. Why was the American Council of Christian Churches established?
to expose and oppose liberalism, socialism, and communism. Siete a vos. Well, uh, it says the American Council of Christian Churches established in 1941 as fundamentalism's answer to the liberal National Council of Churches. Mm -hmm. But it's like every other organization that starts out. They say they're going to do one thing and stay yes. in the direction of fundamentalism, mm -hmm. and then they go liberal. That's right. That's what happens. Gradually it happens. And they want to oppose liberalism, the socialism, communism. And... Um, I don't know that they've gone liberal. You know, but they're, but they're, they're no, not, not yet, not yet, but they're, 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 they're not as strong as they once were, you know, as, as they once were. You know, as far as their opposed liberalism, socialism, communism, um, they unify those who believe in an inerrant Bible. You know, they're, they're, some of these positions that they, have, that they originally were founded on, they're becoming weaker in their, in their vantage point. Uh, they got clay in their feet, too. Yes, that's right. Uh, number 40, the next question uh, from page 377. What does section 6 of the Niagara Creed stress? 377. Page 377. 6. Ask me the question again. What does section 6 of the Niagara Creed stress? 377. We believe in the redemption has been accomplished solely by the blood of Jesus Christ, who was made to be sin and made a curse for us, dying in our room instead. And then no repentance, no feeling, no faith, no good resolutions, no sincere efforts, no submission to the rules and regulations of any church, of all the churches that have existed since the days of the apostles, can add in the very least to the value of that precious blood, or to the merit of that finished work wrought for us by him, united in his person, true and proper, divinity with perfect and sinless humanity. All right. And Jill, um, <clears throat> uh, this is coming from page 379. What did the Niagara Creed state about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Page 379? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was the question again? Uh, what did the Niagara Creed state about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Um, it's from section 14. Okay. I should tell you about it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah. All right. Um, A world will not be converted during the present dispensation. That one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's fast ripening for judgment. While there will be a fearful apostasy in the professing Christian body, hence the Lord Jesus will come in person to introduce the millennial age when Israel shall be restored to their own land, and the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, and that his personal and premillennial advent is the blessed hope set before us in the gospel for which we shall be constantly looking. Good. All right, and then um, this last question, uh, uh, everyone gets to answer. I thought it was going to be 13. Pardon me? At first I thought the answer was 13, and then it turned out to be 14. Yeah, that's, it's confusing, isn't it? Confusing. But this next question, everybody answers. Okay. So we'll start with Tammy, and then, then we'll work our way through everybody else, and everybody will answer it. So, uh, Tammy, this question is for you. What is something uh, you have learned about fundamentalism of which you can apply to your life and serve service for our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Well, I guess, like Anna was beginning to point out, there seems to be a common thread um, when uh, people start turning to liberalism. Um, they begin questioning. Uh, the, the Bible's inerrancy, questioning what the Bible says, mm -hmm. um, very similar to um, Dr. Waite's um, uh, presentations of the Bible, where he, where he talks about what Satan, he was the first one to question the Bible. Yes, or, that's right. Uh, oh, God's word, anyway. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Yea, hath God said, and um, we have to be careful that 
we always are looking at um, the Bible with um, an, an obedient heart, mm-hmm. and a willingness to yes. be changed by it rather than to change it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Change by it. I like that. To be changed by it rather than change it. Any more thoughts? Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul and Ling, uh, you would Paul, be, be could actually say something about this too. Uh, uh, so I'll let Elaine go first, and then I'll let you go second. Uh, Elaine, uh, what is something else you've learned from the fundamentalism of which you can apply it to your life and your service to our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Hi, Paul. Something up. How about you? Something you've learned? Myself. These, this book gives so many examples of how the mind can stray. Mm-hmm. You get a little bit of information, and then automatically on your subconscious, things get blown up, they get blown out of proportion. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, you think you know something, and the more you think about what you imagine, your ideas vary, and it morphs into uh, something else. And I think that's what's happening with the uh, liberals of the past, Mm -hmm. and also uh, liberals in general throughout history are pretty much all the same. Yes. Their ego Mm -hmm. gets in between them and God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, When they pray over matters, it's their ego that they really uh, hold a stronger attention to. Uh, A lot of people, when you ask them uh, what is the basis of fact, what's the real bottom line, Mm -hmm. it's how I feel. Yes, that's right. And it's what I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have uh, some friends that go to another church, and uh, uh, the the husband read the uh, book of Revelation many times, and he says, there's no such thing as a millennial Mm -hmm. reign of Christ. Mm-hmm. How could you say that? Yeah. It's in chapter 20. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> right, exactly. It is. <laughs> and there's no such thing mm-hmm. as a thousand year millennial reign. Mm-hmm. I take out my Bible and I start reading it to him, and the language is plain and simple. Yes. And yet, in, in his own mind, he pictures it differently. Mm-hmm. And then he yes. has these other oddball uh, ideas mm-hmm. about it. Right. And. Uh, I keep coming back to the same idea. Lord, please give me understanding. I know the Bible means what it says, Mm -hmm. and it says what it means. I don't want to add on to it. I Mm -hmm. just want to be stripped away of all this nonsense and uh, understand what the Lord is actually saying to me here. Mm -hmm. And it's a constant reminder trying to do that. And I think this book, the studying of this book, has helped me more Mm -hmm. than all of my previous studies altogether. Okay. Uh, I, I felt within uh, just the last uh, couple of months 
that I've really come along mm. a long way towards uh, that understanding. It's great, man. and uh, it's been uh, quite a uh, thing of freedom for me. Mm. Okay. Hey, Bob, go ahead. Uh, your response to this question. Did you say freedom for you, Bill? Yes, what? freedom. Why? Well, it's freedom because uh, there's no enslavement there. I'm not. Uh, I'm not chained down by the ideas of the world so much. Mm. When I read the Bible, I'm much freer uh, okay. spiritually. Because of feel, this course? Yeah, I think this course has done a lot for me. Good. Good. Uh, I like this course very much, too. I think people, the people that dropped out should have stayed and persevered. Some of it's harder than others. Yes. I have a background that I understood, and even some is harder. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I was very interested. I think fundamentalism started with prayer meetings. Did, is that what we had? Yeah, that's what we're saying. I mean, as far as the New Day prayer meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was very interested in how it grew from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was exciting to read and very moving to read. And um, the early prayer meetings and how it all started. And then uh, I was interested in uh, A.J. Gordon because, like I mentioned, it yes. was time with mm -hmm. Andy Crosby. And, he, and uh, I was, didn't know that he was a, I, I knew that he wrote songs like My Jesus, I Love, mm -hmm. that he wrote songs. Yes. I didn't know he was a Bible teacher, mm -hmm. really, even though he taught Fanny Crosby yes. at the time at the, mm -hmm. at the Northfield Bible Conference. But uh, he was, and I, I knew about Gordon College, but I didn't realize that this A.J. Gordon had started. It was sort of just because it was more liberal and I didn't care. So that was interesting to me. And also, I was trying to find where it mentions Dr. Ketchum. I thought it was interesting. He wrote the, uh, uh, I wish I could find it here, then I could review it. Uh, he uh, wrote the big pamphlets on separation, I guess. I'm not quite sure what it was. And he, he must have argued for his positions against the Northern Baptist apostates. And he became a leader just by his arguing mm -hmm. and all that. And people look to him. And that's how a lot of leaders are born. They don't start out and they don't really want to be controversial. They just have a conviction and stand for it. And then they become leaders. And I know Dr. Ketchum's... I, did we read in here that his mother died? We may have. I can't remember. But I know well, his we wife... We talked about it briefly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know that his... Well, that was interesting to me because I didn't know that. I know his mother died. I mean, his wife died and left orphan children mm -hmm. and he had to take care of those children mm -hmm. for a while until he married. I don't remember when he married again, but he did marry again. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I've enjoyed it very much and you're a good teacher. It's been uh, very good and I hope that a lot of people uh, click on and hear this in the future. Okay. Maybe they will. Thank One or two you. people will click on it and hear it. Uh, Jill, it's fun to have with us. Well, I want to say that I know I was coming every single week for a while, and then mm -hmm. things got difficult right, right. for me, like, you know, whether, you know, <coughs> me, my personal life, my mother, this, that, and then I was with my gum surgeries and all these other things were going on, so I was beginning to say, oh, this semester's turning out to be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I stuck with it anyway, yes. even though I might have missed certain Fridays. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. And I'm glad I did stick with it. I mean, granted, I didn't. Read or you know, um, didn't remember to read or just was too tired to read or didn't have time to read. certain um, pages in here because mm -hmm. I uh, missed different Fridays and because my mind was uh, yes, mm -hmm. you know, it was with my gums and all these things were going on. But um, I'm glad, very glad that I took this course because it opened my eyes to a lot of uh, fundamentalist history I never knew before. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean, I knew certain things, but I didn't know the names of all these. People individually, yes, even I might have right. heard of certain people. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what they were all about. I didn't know their right. backgrounds. I didn't mm -hmm. know, you know, maybe they uh, started at certain schools or that certain schools of theirs crumbled because mm -hmm. they were very easily influenced by different people. Right. Or groups, mm -hmm. popular people or groups of the day. Yes. And, um, you know, like people could start out very strong. This book is a prime example. Different people mm -hmm. um, could start out very strong, and certain ones can remain. Strong uh, Christians and fundamentalists, mm -hmm. whereas other ones could just fall by the wayside, right. and fall on rocky soil, mm -hmm. and just be influenced by other people. Yes. And like Bill was saying, you know, according to how they 
Mm -hmm. Like Mrs. White was saying, uh, somebody was a very good, uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but there was somebody who was a very good um, debater, and he was going to go into law mm -hmm. or something. He thought that was cool, and then I think one night he fell on his knees, and he just wanted to serve the Lord, and he just felt convicted by God to serve mm -hmm. him instead of going into law. Right. Was that Shields? I think it was Riley. Who was right. that? Riley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, Riley. I just forgot the name. But, um, yeah. you know, so, I mean, certain people might think they have a gift in a certain way, and yeah, maybe they do have a gift, but God doesn't want them to be using it in their own self-sufficiency right. mm -hmm. as much as he wants uh, him to use, the people to use the gift for his glory. And for the mm -hmm. advancing of his kingdom, yes. there are things. I mean, I can look at my own gifts or strengths, or you know, like I really love people, and just I don't know, like uh, and so you know, I like to have an open ear to them and everything. But instead of you know, brought my own way and, mm -hmm. and argue or be upset or be swayed by other people. Right. However, I know I still have a lot to learn yes. as a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm still a progress person in progress mm -hmm. and in process. Right. And I won't be totally perfected until I get my resurrected body. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's right. perfected not just physically but mentally, mm -hmm. spiritually most importantly in, in all these different ways. Right. Mm -hmm. But um you know, it's amazing like Billy Graham and different people could say like, Oh yeah, inerrancy doesn't mean anything to me. I don't even know why we use the word or why we have yeah. the word or what's what's going on. Yeah, you know, I mean I don't even know what you know, and I'm not surprised that a Roman Catholic university or college gave him an honorary degree because mm -hmm. it seems like his heart was back then as and also now is with Catholicism mm -hmm. more than he resembles any semblance of like a born again human being, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? He's sending, you know, he's I mean, some people go astray under his two religion teaching and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, um, not only today's leaders, but also I read in the book, found out that a lot of these people and leaders that a lot of people followed were strong, but mm -hmm. some led other people astray. But in general, it opened my eyes just to be even more discerning yes. and more mm -hmm. watchful, right. you know? Because mm -hmm. I know the devil, you know, um, wants mm -hmm. to can devour and everything. And I mean, even the strongest of Christians, if they fall just a little bit, the devil will get right in there and hold up their weaknesses mm -hmm. and just, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. That's right. And, um, you know, so God wants us to just be watchful mm -hmm. and right. uh, gentle but wise at the same time. Right? Mm -hmm. Wise is certain, uh, wise is certain, as gentle as does, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, uh, <coughs> taught, you know, this course has taught me to be even more watchful. You know, I thought, you know, naively, I guess, that, okay, you know, fundamentalism would, you know, uh, start out strong. It did start out very strong, and it got worse as time went by. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess before I took the course, I was thinking, well, okay, you know, what fundamentalists stand for, their purpose, and, you know, the deity of Christ, the inerrancy of the, the Word of God, and the virgin birth, and Christ and God mm -hmm. are the same, and, you know, uh, even though they're different, but you can't d distinguish the two, and, right. and, and everything else. But I, th I thought naively that, okay, the definition of fundamentalism is what perhaps defined the history of fundamentalism. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, mm -hmm. with that in mind, that there weren't going to be a lot of erroneous people mm. as fundamentalists. Mm -hmm. And I was wrong mm -hmm. when I learned, yes. you know, right, right. the history of fundamentalism and what the fundamentalists stood for and what they fell away from. I, I was wrong in different ways. Mm -hmm. so, you know. Anna, something you have learned about this? Uh, and how you apply it to your life and service? Well, um, as we that we were discussing earlier, there's a very common thread of um, problems um, as far as when people start to doubt the inerrancy of scripture, yes. mm -hmm. then they start to fall away in all sorts of doctrinal ways. Because if you can't, if you don't believe that the word of God is without error, then how can you believe what it says? Mm -hmm. And um, so I suppose, I mean, we, we study the history of fundamentalism, but if you think about it, I mean, the word fundamentalism may refer to a certain period of time, but the concept of inerrancy of scripture and all the correct biblical doctrines that follow from mm -hmm. that 
they have always been around, and there have always been people following, like, the scriptures and, and believing in the inerrancy of scriptures um, throughout all of history, all of, ever since, you know, the first, first five books were written down. Yes. And before that, I mean, yeah, Abraham... God, God gave Abraham promises, and he believed God, and it was counted unto him for mm -hmm. righteousness. Um, I suppose where I'm going with all of this is, uh, regardless of what we call ourselves, and like what name we go by, and mm -hmm. so forth, we always have to come back to the scriptures, and the scriptures must be our guide. Yes, they must be. Mm -hmm. And if we ever start doubting doubting them, then that's a very dangerous place because mm -hmm. that's where humanity went wrong in the first place. Yes, because that's right. <clears throat> that's right. Uh, Satan said, Yea, hath God said. He was casting doubt on the scripture. Well, on God's word, which was it was verbal at the time. Yes. Um but um <clears throat> and so he continues to do this to this day and I mean that's basically what's been going on for centuries, yes, that's millennia, right. um, and um, and the scripture. I mean, Jesus Christ has is in heaven, but we have the word of God in black and white it, because Christ is the word of God incarnate, and we have the word of God in scripture. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if we are Christians, Christ ones, then we must study, like, the things which speak of Christ, and, and we must stand mm -hmm. by them. I guess that my whole point, of the, my whole point is, I mean, we've seen repeating themes throughout history, not just the history of fundamentalism, but throughout all of history, and I guess... Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the big picture mm. and mm -hmm. They're all related. the yeah. constant battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alan. Anyone else have any final thoughts or comments about the bill? Huh? Uh, just sort of to add on to uh, what Anna was mm -hmm. saying, um, I was thinking about this all the time. I was listening to everybody else. Mm -hmm. We see these patterns all through society. We do. Mm -hmm. uh, all, Everybody believing themselves, uh, mm -hmm. their own as their own final authority, and uh, it's difficult to get on track of reading the Bible and believing it exactly. Mm -hmm. It's hard to recognize that there is so much truth there. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're reading and interpreting, you're automatically thinking in other patterns. At least someone like me and right. many other people who have been away from the church mm -hmm. for a long time. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, are thinking that way. So it's quite a struggle to get back into it and see the plain truth of God yes. uh, in there. But uh, this course has done a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wish uh, the others had remained mm -hmm. yes. because then they would see uh, the same patterns right. in these mm -hmm. books by those liberals yep. that their politicians are doing and mm -hmm. other people in society. Yep. That's right. That's good. As we're talking, I'm thinking of the Northern Baptist Convention, which... Uh, I remember when my parents came out, yes. mm -hmm. but I was amazed how these preachers wanted to stay in there so bad. Mm -hmm. Even though apostates were coming in, they wanted to preserve it, they wanted to get the apostates out. It can never get bad out once it comes mm -hmm. in. No, you can't. I guess it's very hard, maybe never too strong, but like if you, like if you get uh, uh, on your clothes, it's always hard to make it look like it did before. If some bad, uh, something gets in a mixture that you're making. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was amazed how these, these people that knew the Word of God wanted to stay in there and preserve it. I guess because the missions and because so many people had put so much effort into the past, it was so hard for them to come out of the national of the Northern Baptist Convention. It was, it was so much a part of them. Right. I guess there was a time when it was all fundamental, mm -hmm. you know, all Bible-believing, the olden days. So that to me was... Uh, was very interesting, and so I guess we could apply it to ourselves. Sometimes it's hard to come out 
from some things. I can't think of anything right now because we're always coming out of everything. But mm-hmm. That's my other thought. Just like this is way it said a while. I remember this, I commented on this like weeks, several weeks ago or whatever, where, you know, people get attached sometimes also to a certain building. Yes. You know, you said you know, this woman, yeah. a church or something, mm-hmm. and she, you know, the church became uh, liberal, apostate, whatever it became. And she just started out pretty strong, but she just stayed and stayed and stayed, and she's attached to the building like some kind of false idol or something. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, so people have their own motives for being attached to Mrs. something. Ohani. Yeah, their Was own, um, you know, mistakenly attached, or they just selfish, or they won't look at the Bible, they just look at their own wants and needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have, but I have friends there, I don't want to leave my friends. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, something like that, something superficial compared to the Bible. Which right. is I was married only true My right. father was buried from that building. There's a lot of family connection to a building. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you were saying something like that, too. Any more thoughts or comments? Anyone has? Observations? Thank you for teaching. I'm glad to do it. You went through the book, whole book, got through it. And most of the classes, I think all of them perhaps are online. They'll look at it later on if you need to, if you want to. And I think they're also on the DVD of some sort. Uh, as well in different places and so so on. Dr. Dean. Yes. What's the, um, <clears throat> you having? I know the first one that you had had, or the one that you had before this was theology. Right. And then you had this on the history of fundamentalism. Mm, right. Are you having another class, and what will it be? Are you still pondering? We're still thinking about it, Jill, but um, okay. there, there may be another one that's coming. Okay. Possibly. Um, um, one one option is um, about eschatology. Um, that's a possibility. That's around a study of last things, eschatology. Around the same time frame or day yeah. or day? Yeah, it would the same, the same, be the same day, same time, Fridays at 3 o'clock. The time may move a little bit, but uh, Fridays at 3 o'clock, I suppose it works out fine. And um, I mean, is there some, some particular topic you're interested in? In addition, in, in else other than eschatology, something else you might be interested in? Um, well, you know what? With that in mind, I'd like to. I want to review. I didn't think about it. I mean, there's also we've also talked about doing a uh, study on, you know, on, on Christology in the sense of the deity of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That, that's a possibility too. Yeah. Um, and I can review the. Um, well, I think I have the old theology notes. There's somewhere yeah. in an old notebook, but yeah. uh, the yeah. outline of the syllabus for for that. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. theology and Christology. These different things were covered, like right. angel well, so and What's, what's the topic you'd be interested in studying? Okay, Bill, so, oh. What's an interesting topic you might be talking about? Anything else to anything else? Or? The prophecy. Prophecy, okay. Yeah. Mama, what's something you might be interested in? Well, I, I would like to learn about like Mormonism and the cults. The cults, and okay. Like that. Right. But I think we should have a vacation. Well, yes, we're going to. Yeah, we're going to have a vacation a little bit. Yes, you've got it. Yeah. Is that? Be in the fall. Yeah, be in the fall, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think until we, then we can take our vacation together right. uh, at the yeah. church's expense on the French Riviera. Okay. And, uh, right. <laughs> Sounds good. Are we going to have a field trip? Yeah, we're field trip. We'll talk about the field trip. We'll talk about that after class, maybe. Okay. Um, but Bill, go ahead and prayer, please. Father in heaven, thank you for the teachings that you have provided to us uh, through this church. We thank you for uh, giving Pastor Dan the knowledge, uh, the ability to teach this subject effectively, and uh, we thank you for all the the classes that we have had here, uh, especially since uh, this kind of an education should cost us all a lot of money, and uh, most of us really can't afford uh, but you have found a way of getting these messages to us so that we can understand the Bible more closely. And for that, we can uh, only say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.